Okay, lecture 12, we'll talk about inspection, labeling, and secondary packaging uh, operation. Okay, first of all, CISPQ, I guess all of you are familiar with this term. So, CISPQ stands for the safety, identity, strength, purity, and quality of your product. So, especially if you're involved in pharmaceutical manufacturing process, all of the employees expect to know what they are and understand uh, this terminology and comply with uh, the secondary manufacturing uh, manufacturing that are developed and then are regulated to protect the product CSPQ. Okay, so your product that you're manufacturing should be safe and uh, should be what it is as identified as it is and its strength should be as defined and it should be pure and should have a good quality. And uh, one of the ways of, you know, uh, protecting the product CSPQ is uh, by doing uh, your product inspection. Okay, so inspection is one of the, you know, uh, manufacturing steps that are ensuring the product CSPQ. Okay, so all of the injectable uh, products uh, that are manufactured, every single vial should be in, uh, inspected for any um, foreign substance that should not be there. Okay, so parent, parental uh, products should be visually inspected for defined attributes. Okay, it should be a clean solution. You should only have a clean solution. You should not have anything like this. Okay, like maybe laminated glass vial, anything that's floating in there. Okay, so each container must be examined for container defects. Container itself should be examined as well, and the product defects. Okay, so defects so-called you know uh, not good products okay they are classified as a critical defects major defects and minor defects okay um, depends on the severity of the defect and what kind of you know, uh, life-threatening consequences it may cause uh, it may be classified as a critical defect so critical defect as is uh, its definition will cause life-threatening consequence if it is you know uh, given to a patient of course and then it so because of that it will trigger a product recall so the entire batch of the product should not be used so immediate product recall is initiated if you identify a critical defect among the batches that are released to public okay so it, it is very important to identify any critical defect before you release your batch of course okay so examples are uh, if you have a cracks in your container, primary container, or if the seals are bad, if there's a leaking happening, of course, that's not good, or the leaking man means things can go in there as well, so that would cause contamination, of course. Uh, missing a stopper, you know, stopper, the lower closure system is not there, then, of course, it's going to open up, and then it's going to contaminate uh, the product. Microbial contamination, of course, you know, uh, foreign cells are growing in there, definitely not a uh, big no. And glass uh, uh, delamination, you know, it's like glass is kind of uh, melted away. All of those are not good. Okay, so those should not be there. So uh, you cannot um, have any of those. That's what it means, acceptable quality limit. So can you have and maybe a one vial of that out of maybe thousands? No, you should not have any of those. Okay, so critical defect is very important, very dangerous. Okay, you should identify that if there's any. And then there are major defects, maybe major defect category A or B. Um, they're both uh, kind of non-life threatening, but uh, that will trigger product complaint if you know uh, these defects are released to the public. Okay, uh, so examples are like visible for in a particular matter. Visible means they are large enough. Okay, so they should not be there. So um, you could have that accidentally, right? So the AQL limit will be about 0.25 percent out of the entire batch. So you could have that. Okay, and then major defect category two, uh, B is uh, also it would trigger a product complaint. Example is that discoloration, okay, of your drug for some reason but this coloration would not cause any you know uh, degradation or um, inactivation of the drug it may be just a cosmetic uh, appearance change okay uh, that could be a little more acceptable like your limit is a little higher 0.65 like percent uh, okay and then there are so-called minor defects 
minor defects are uh, mostly cosmetic nature okay so if that happens you know uh, would lower the customer perception uh, of the quality okay, of your product so examples are scratches on the you know surface of the container or crooked seals so those do not you know affect the product integrity but just outer appearance okay mostly cosmetic uh, perception so the aql limit is a little higher about 2.5 percent okay so so those are the defect categories understand what they are and then each of the uh, defect categories is assigned a number a numerical value that represents the acceptable quality limit we talked about why what aql is so those are the maximum number of each level of defects that can be found during qa inspection without impacting overall batch quality Okay, so of course you know critical defect if you have any that's going to affect the batch quality so that's why you cannot have any okay so that's aql limit is uh, developed and established by you know, nc so american uh, national standard institute uh working with the uh, uh, asq american society of quality control so uh, asqc they came up uh, together uh, the standard uh, z1.4 uh, implemented in the year 2008 okay? so that's called sampling procedures and tables for inspection by attributes okay that is a uh, primary reference used for the setting up uh, aql limits so it looks like this okay so the batch size depends on like a small clinical trial phase one maybe phase two phase three so your batch size will get bigger of course maybe commercial batch will be over maybe more than half million batch that's possible okay so in this if you are doing an inspection okay okay review of sample size let's say you have inspect um inspected about 200 out of that um allowed critical of course all of the uh the product will be inspected Okay, uh, but review inspect means means it's secondary inspect. Okay, among the ones that are already inspected, you maybe take sample uh, out of those ins already inspected batches, take about 200 samples, and you identify, uh, let's see if there's a problem or not. Okay, again, critical defect you're not allowed to have any. Okay, it's, it's all zero. Okay, major major defects you know, less than one percent. One percent. Okay, so five out of maybe. Uh, maybe 1200 for example okay and then um, as the batch size goes up it could go up a little bit more but it's less than one percent for sure and the minor defects less than 2.5 percent okay regardless of our batch size okay it's a percentage okay and then the inspection during the secondary manufacturing okay what kind of inspections will take place uh, so if we look at the secondary uh, drug manufacturing of course product filling is happening product filled in primary uh, packaging material like uh, vials or syringes are filled with the drug and then after that inspection counts and gross defects like broken vials so uh, uh, visual uh, it's not thorough inspection but uh, rough visual inspection will take place and after that uh, uh, secondary inspection but it's going to be a full full uh, visual inspection uh, that will take place we'll talk about the light booth uh, usage but the entire um, the product batch will be inspected that's where the aql limit uh, is uh, applied okay quality assurance has the final say to that um, after that secondary device assembly if your drug would require the secondary device such as safety devices or auto injectors and things like that that are added to your primary vials or containers and those will be inspected as well then on top of that secondary packaging and labeling will take place like syringes vials are placed in a specific package designed for the end user and labeling controls uh, are in place and regarding a uh, required labeling is applied and confirm we'll talk about the labeling principles and what the fda says about the labeling and then uh qa review all the paperwork related to the production of the batch uh batch lot and their release uh, okay so the final release will be determined by qa Okay, if, if it's meeting the specification requirements, of course it will be released. But if it's not meeting, of course that batch is not going to be released and it's going to be rejected. So if it is released, then additional packaging labels and the product info storage conditions are added to that, and the products are shipped finally to the clients. Uh, okay. So this. 
picture showed you uh, the light inspection booth you can see uh, there's a kind of quite uh, bright light is used and there's a white background and black background so your vials are inspected by this uh, visual inspector who sits in front of this light inspection booth uh, gloved hands uh, and then maybe a couple of vials at a time uh, you're grabbing a certain way and you look at the vial liquids against the white background few seconds okay and then you swirl it to make sure any settled particle uh, will be float can be become visible and then you may need to uh, invert it okay upside down and see if anything you can see you, know, you do the same thing against the dark, dark uh, background as well so if you, your particular is colored it may show better against ba a white background it may show better if it's kind of whitish uh, particle against the black uh, background so that's why you need the both white and black background and you have to inspect uh, on both background okay so that's what the light inspection booth may look like okay we have a couple of you know lab as well you will do the handle lab on those so manual inspection so an inspector is physically picking up the vials examine the product uh, drug product containers and uh, uh, so the light booth is used for that and uh, there's a black wall uh, and the white uh, white wall so the so back wall is made out of non glare material so the light should not be reflected a lot so your eyes uh, sight vision will be uh, affected uh, so but you'll have black and white background like I said uh, so you inspect one or two containers at a time depending on the size uh, so you examine against both light uh, background okay and let's see Amount of time each container or set of containers looked at should be limited uh, and then defined within the uh, inspection. So SOP will tell you how long you can look at it. If you look at it too long, that's not even good. And if you look at it too short, of course, that's not good inspection. So there's a defined time, maybe 5 seconds or 10 seconds time period. So like I said, prolonged examination does not result in a better inspection. Okay, so it may increase your suspicion, suspicion, but you know, it may may be hard to determine if it's a air bubble or if it's a you know particle. So you have to make good uh, sound judgment. Okay. So in general, just results in higher level of false results. So that's why you have to limit the inspection time. And then any container have uh, having identified defects are rejected. So uh, you have to separate them out. Okay, and then label uh, what the cause of the uh, defect is. Okay, each defect is recorded in the appropriate category, like if it's a critical defect, major uh, defect, or minor defect. The inspectors must be properly trained and periodically uh, certified. I think at least like every year, their eyesight are examined, and you know they are trained again. They are recertified. Okay, if they are t making uh, too many errors, you know of course they are. Uh, supervisor uh, will make a recommendation uh, this inspector should be retrained or you know uh, uh, put into another assignment or something like that okay so due to focus and concentration requirements the maximum amount of time limited for the inspection and the mandatory break is mandate, mandated right so if it's like one hour inspection there may be like 15 minute break uh, that that is uh, that should be uh, given uh, periodically okay and at the end of inspection, the number of rejects totaled, or total number will be identified, and limits for each defect type or overall defect limit may vary, of course. Uh, some have in-process limits that may trigger uh, the title AQL, and other have some limits uh, for percentage. We talked about that. Okay? Um, if exceeds, Okay, so and you it will trigger an uh, investigation because if you have too many you know, defects, of course, there's a problem going on. So you have to identify where the, those defects are coming from. Are those coming from the operators? Uh, are they coming from maybe broken instrument, manufacturing instrument? You have to identify why they are uh, there and what they are coming from. So there should be a mechanism in place to recognize and uh, react to out-of-trend result that may uh, in, uh, impact product quality. That's very important. So basic procedure for manual inspection is written here. You can take a look at that. 